welcome back, it's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw an emu. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, so here's the emu. Um, it's already scratched out, as you can see. Um, so, we're just going to start with the beak, which is going to be kind of a light gray, and then the feathers are going to be a dark gray, eyes are going to be brown, it's going to be a little bit of pink where we can see the tongue or whatever. Um, We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So, right, they have some ridges in their beaks like many birds do. Um, for now, we're just lightly filling in. We'll be applying the highlights a little later. Right, we have the tip of the beak as it comes down, just coming up. Nice sort of long strokes around the nostrils here, like many birds have. Um, and you can see I'm sort of swooping my strokes as I come up this way. There is a little bit of a ridge here too. It's a ridge like right at the edge of the right at the edge of the edge of the beak. <laughs> Sounds redundant. It's my redundant redundant statement. So we'll draw up to that edge. That'll help us when we add highlights and shadows because that's really what's going to distinguish it. Um, for me to see it, unless I have to have the sketch layer on, which sometimes I do, but here's hoping I don't. Right, we'll draw through here. Some of it will be covered by the um, feathers, and then of course, being careful by the beak, not to interrupt by the beak, by the nostrils on the beak, since this is in fact the beak. Same thing here with this ridge, right? We'll draw up to the edge of the ridge, but not cross over it and underneath, draw underneath the ridge there, and then, you know, extend the strokes back out. Um, and then just sort of, you know, work our way over. I am almost doing this in shadow, because I'm adding enough lines that I'm almost filling it all the way in. I guess I could. It slows down this process, but it will speed up the next step if I add enough lines. Um, so, what's happening here? We have, you know, um, the beak here. Again, being careful here. And then we have underneath, but there's several things happening underneath. And again, the nostril. Extend that stroke out. Right, just cutting it off. And just cutting it off. So that if I pop that off, you can clearly see the ridge there. It's because we cut the lines off. It'll make that visible. And then of course down here, same thing. Where we have the nostril and all of that happening. And once again, cutting lines off as we're connecting the ridge of the beak into the rest of the beak. Being careful all around the nostrils. Because it's a beak, we don't have as much forgiving. I mean, because of the style we do, but it's a little bit more forgiving with fur or feathers because it's a little wilder so you can push into those spaces without feeling like you've overstepped. Right, and then just bringing this all the way over just like we did with the other stuff. And then we have several lines to sort. We don't have to be nice and clean where it's running into the feathers because that is a little different. Okay, now we have, right, the interior of the mouth, and then we have this part here, which is the bottom of the beak. All right, so we're gonna push this down. There's some ridging here where you have the beak where the light would be picking it up, and then where it's instead gonna be fading, um, same thing on this side fading into um, 
shadow. All right, so it's a little easier because we're just going to run them into each other. All right, so down here where they're kind of ramming together, and then you're going to have this ridging where it's beginning to fade. as it goes into shadow. All right, so let's see about exactly how we're gonna finish that out. Some of this is gonna change once we add highlights and shadows. All right. Um, yeah, so then I'm gonna do just a little bit of pink. This will help sort out all of these lines where the tongue is because right, we have the tongue down here. So once again, just very light pin pressure. So the tongue pushes kind of down and over. We won't want this to be very bright, but and there's a little bit of pink kind of here in the mouth on both sides where you're picking up just kind of the edge of the cheek there. So if we undo that, that's what we have. This is looking full crazy. And then um, the darker for the feathers, right? So this will be a little longer strokes, a little crazier. You don't have to follow necessarily a good pattern because the feathers on an emu are kind of going a little bit of everywhere. Right, so it's just kind of I mean, there are certain patterns that always are true, right? Over the eyes, you're looping up and over, but, you know, for an emu, it's really noticeable because they have these giant ridges kind of over their eyes. Right, so just sort of filling that in. And then by the eye being careful, just like with the um, nostril, except the eye has another sort of importance to it in that, um, you know, it's the first thing we look at. So we want to be careful whenever we're drawing by an eye. There's the loop over the eye where you have kind of an eyelid. Um, and we're going to have this come down a bit because I had it come down further on the other side. And then being careful, you know, likewise under the eye, same thing, being mindful of that will have the, the feathers coming off at an angle behind the eye, but I still need to be careful even though now I'm ramming the, the um, strokes directly into it. And I'm following, you know, the bottom bulge around. There'll be some shadowing there. Um, but, you know, we'll have the feathers coming right off of that. And they have kind of this little cheek over here. Um, and then you're gonna have kind of these shorter, tighter feathers down in here. So just doing very light, tight feathers until we would extend it back out. You're starting to get the sense of a crazy looking bird. There is some shadowing, or there will be. Everything's kind of shadowing right now. Above where um, this fluff is pushing out. Right, so you have the longer hair up top, this would be in highlight, except the edges in shadow. And then underneath in shadow, but right now we're not really doing that, we're just kind of doing the whole thing. And then just bringing their fur kind of straight up. Yeah, and then we'll be fixing some of this as we add, again, as we add the highlights and shadows. Or the highlights, I'm kind of already adding the shadows maybe more shadows. All right, just filling that in. 
so um and then right it's just as I come down I'd be angling this down right it's coming straight off the beak so angling that down and then allowing those strokes to come to the edge so I'm gonna finish the rest of this just this step because um, I'll come back before the highlights um, so I'm gonna finish this and I'll be right back Um, so we are going to start with the beak to add the highlights. Um, I'm going to have the light source coming from above and to the right. As always, that's above and in front of, not behind or next to. Now, um, I did kind of already add, you know, a lot of um, lines for the shadows. So we should be able to just add highlights. Now there is a strip some lines that come down this way and then the beak itself the tip of the beak would be in shadow right so as we come over here we'll have some shadowing as this sort of tips over from highlight over into that little dip that there is depending on how dark we make it will depend on how big that is, but it shouldn't be dark. It shouldn't be too dark. It's not a big one. But enough that it's there before kind of picking back up. Um, underneath the uh, nostril and to the other side, you would have some highlighting, but there'd be shadowing um, on the side going into the recess itself right so some highlighting here but as we come down right that's in a recess and then again we have this little bit of a lip here so a distinct line and then we'll add in the highlight just over top before um, it would go into shadow as the beak rounds itself down right so there'd be a little bit of highlight right up here and then working its way over going into some shadowing as it goes on this back side so you would have a dip where the beak comes in and then probably picking up a little bit here where it comes back out um, and just pushing it nice and up. There would be some shadowing from the feathers because they're covering it. I'm still adding some highlight but not pushing it all the way up into the feathers. Certainly pushing the lines into the feathers but not the highlight. Right. And then, you know, same thing on this side. Go into a recess down here. Highlight underneath. Recess on the top. Pulling this over. And then, just like before, right, you're going to have that line of highlight before it goes into shadow. Underneath, just making sure it fades nicely into that. And then this would remain highlight all the way over, uh, except underneath, <laughs> except where I just drew. With, of course, some amount of shadowing again at the top where the feathers are. And then we can temper out, you know, this little spot up here too. It's still there, just a matter of brightening it up to make it less um, deep. <laughs> and this side would probably have a less deep one than the other side. But yeah, here we go. The top of the beak. 
We have the bottom. You're going to have some highlighting down here because this is right on the edge, right? So you're going to have some, un you know, underneath would still be in shadow, but you're highlighting kind of right on the edge of the beak. Right, same over here. Catching just that little bit of light here. And then it's turned inward, so this would definitely be nice and bright. With a shadow down at the bottom. And then, you know, a little bit happening here as the beak pushes in. Well, the light source coming from the left, the light would be catching on the left. So it needs to fade in there. So then for the darker feathers, and it's gray, not black, so we can put full pin pressure. We'll get the, the tongue and other stuff after. Right, so, you know, this is full pin pressure here, and you can see the difference. Well, full pin pressure and or more lines, because we've already added some lines. There's some shadowing, though, so, you know, being mindful of where that is. This is highlight, probably down through here, you're going to have some highlighting. And under that would be some shadowing because that's where, you know, you have kind of a loop uh, where the feathers are above and over that spot. And that would be, you know, highlight around it. You're going to have some um, highlighting, of course, on the eyelid going into shadow under the eye and on the edge of the eyelid. So we're not fully filling in the eyelid. Just enough. And then as the eyelid comes around this side, we'll back off that pin pressure as well. Give it enough indication that it's actually an eyelid here. Um, and then underneath, you're going to have that burst on the eye instead of having that shadow there because it's right against the eye, that light would be catching it once again. Kind of that under eye area. And then it'd be full pin pressure on this back side. Of course, except where it's going into shadow on the edges. And then you probably have a little bit of shadowing under um, where that there's that little bit of an eye bulge there, connecting in. I'm going to say this is going to come up a bit higher before you would have that full shadow kick in. Um, and then the, the little, like, feathers. Which would be highlight up to a point. <laughs> Highlight all through here. And highlight, of course, here. As it comes back over and off the mouth. And highlight all through here. And we'll do a little bit here. Right, and then just, you know, building that up, making sure I'm pushing down into where the beak is so there's no big gap. Um, unlike a lot of animals where the fur remains static, you can waver this one because their, their feathers kind of shift and move. Um, they're long enough that they don't necessarily remain static the whole way. Right, so we'll just keep building this up. But, you know, all edges are in shadow, so as I come to the edges, I actually lay off of my pin pressure and I just add more lines to help blend it in. Um, and then I pick back up on the pin pressure once I kind of come away from it, right? So back off of my pin pressure up in here, 
just add more lines it still brightens it up All right so as we come down in here we have a brighter um, image but because the pin pressure also increases the um, the size of the lines it can make it harder to blend so by backing it off it decreases the size of the lines more lines will still fill it in but it makes it easier to blend so I'll do that where I'm, I'm running into areas that are full of shadow I'm just backing it off and allowing the the allowing more lines to do the work for me instead of you know more actual pressure um, and again I am kind of varying my my lines as well intentionally now you're gonna have pure shadow on some of the areas over here um, but they're gonna be brighter than like you know you have that spot underneath so it's gonna be brighter than that and over here it's gonna be highlight right so in front of the eye it'll be highlight be running down into the shorter feathers um, I'd say it's probably highlight up through here, but you're going to have a bigger area of shadow to contend with on the back side. Um, not as much on the forehead. So forehead, kind of all stable. You're going to have all of this, you know, this little loose, tiny little feathers by the face. That can be highlight. You might have a little gap where the face is turning because it's a bird. You know, you know, probably kicking back out here, right? Just a little bit, right under the eye, especially on the little like bulge underneath the eye. We're gonna have a little bit of highlighting again on that front side to the top, not underneath, and on the back would go definitively into shadow. So just allowing that to 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 blend in. Um. You know, as I mentioned, some highlighting up in here, and then probably going into shadow here. And then as we move down, definitely going into shadow, because then the beak would start blocking that. So, but all of this, you know, you're gonna have some highlight. All this in the middle. Now, underneath this side's definitely in shadow. This side, you probably have a little bit right where the beak is coming in, right? So there'd be a gap in between, and then of course underneath, you'd have it. But you'd have a little bit of highlighting as well. Depending on your angle of your light source, depends on exactly where that beak would be causing some shadow. So we'll minimize this out as we get close. So we're going to give it a bigger and bigger shadow and then sort of fade it out. Um, and then other than the edges, everything will be in highlight. Um, let, me, let me do what I did over there and push this in a bit. All right, so I'm going to um, finish out the forehead and I'll be right back. Do a little bit with the pink. Um, make sure I'm on the right layer. Not much, just kind of a little bit here. Looks kind of crazy, but I guess emus do kind of look crazy. And then the eyes. Um, so eyes are, are pretty straightforward, done them a million times. I just realized that this is a little less clean than the other side. I'm just going to take this real fast and snipe off that little corner. Helps if I go to the right layer and somewhere. How is it? Okay. Now, um, first thing is I always draw on the pupil, right? So I'm just going to take this and draw on the pupil. You center it more towards the inside than you think you need to. That was a poor example of the pupil. Um, and again, it's fine. You know what? It's fine. But you don't want it like dead center because it'll look like it's kind of looking off. 
So by pushing it just a little to the, to the inside, but not too much, see that's too much, um, you kind of fix that just a little bit so that it's looking at the figure and not um, off in the distance somewhere. <laughs> Okay, now, what I'm going to do is then take these lines and sort of lightly fill in all the way around, right? We're going to follow that down, so we're going to do kind of a, a semicircle, right? Following this edge to create a harsh shadow on the top, following that edge with, oh, their eyes are so big. It's always the debate, do I fill all the way around or do I half fill? If I half fill, then this is where I fill. If I fill all the way around, then I would, you know, obviously at the top. On a half fill, this is it, right? You just, you create a semicircle around the eye. This is what I often do. Birds are usually the only exception to that. Um, especially like owls or something, their eyes are so big. Their eyes are pretty big, but I think we can get away with not doing that, with doing just the semicircle here. So then the same thing on this side, right? Bringing that down and around, doing the same over here, and, and just sort of meeting in the middle. And then we'll add the highlights after we get the pupil sort of fixed up. And just see if I think this is yeah I think that could work I do I don't think we need to fill in the whole thing it's more work to fill in the whole thing and sometimes useful um, but I don't think in this case we need it but I am going to do some things so I'm gonna bring in the elliptical marquee tool um, select that, get it where I think it looks, it's looking at us, and then backspace, delete, select inverse, reselect the paintbrush tool, and kind of cross draw, right? So really fill in by the pupil here. All right, and then select inverse again. Reselect the elliptical marquee tool and drag that same selection over to do the same thing on the other side. All right, race that out. Select inverse. Reselect that brush tool and cross draw against the pupil. All right, and then we'll deselect it. Yeah. Now, highlights, light source coming from above and to the right. So you're going to have a burst of light against the pupil, opposite side of the light source. Right, burst of light against the pupil, opposite side of the light source. And you're going to have full pin pressure on the side of the light source going all the way underneath the eye but not to the edges. All right, so we're gonna connect that in. I'm gonna come over here and allow shadow to take over as we get close. Allow shadow to come up at the top, so we're backing off our pin pressure here, and then again on the edge. Backing off the pin pressure on the edge, bringing this all the way in to blend it. And then on this back side, just blending it, right? So we're keeping our pin pressure light and we're just blending this in. And then I can, you know, really like flush that out a bit. It's okay that you can see the lines, you know, we have all those um, muscles in our eyes, so you would be able to anyway. Same thing on this side, but much more restrictive with our highlight, right? So we have up here and by the edge in shadow, shadow by the 
pupil there, a little bit of highlight that comes all the way underneath. And then allowing that to go into shadow at the edge. And then, you know, coasting for the rest of this. So I'll finish up this eye and I'll be right back. And the last thing to do is to add in the light flare, assuming I don't decide to add in a top because I'm still debating on it. So to add in a light flare, you're just going to take the elliptical marquee tool, create a little bit of an oval, make sure you're in the highlight, fill it with the foreground color, which I've already changed to an off-white. Drag it over, do the same thing on this side. And fill. Yeah, I think he's looking good. Um, and, you know, we can readjust. I'm actually going to shift both of them to be a little bit more in. Now I'm going to take it on this side, take the um, lasso tool, and I'm going to create some feathered effects in here against the eye here, as if um, the feathers are blocking it. Uh, if I can get a right design. <laughs> And that'll make it look like the feathers are casting a little bit of a shadow. Also diminishes the size of that one against the size that the um, light source has. So the um, only thing I'm debating is the um, pink in the mouth. I don't know if that really shows the cheeks right. So I'm just going to delete out the edges. And then again on that drawing layer, somewhere down here, yeah, here. Just to see if that looks better. And you'd have the tongue. Hmm. I'm going to add it back in, but a little differently. I think I like what I had, but maybe it could still work if, if it's done right. Because I feel like the empty blackness at the edge doesn't quite work, so if I... Yeah, that's a little bright. If I just take, like... A little bit on the sides. Let's just add something there. Right at the edges. Maybe more so closer to the bottom where the mouth would be open. It's turning inward towards the light source, so maybe you'd have some of that that would catch the light. This side not as much. And it would just kinda you know fade away. I think that balance is better and shows off that it's more interior than what I had before. I probably do a little bit more too. Like just a few lines indicates it's going off into like a recess. And you have the indication that there's more there than just blackness. Yeah, I think that works. I'm going to weight it just a little bit more. just on this edge here, a little bit more here, mm. so again I'm going to redo it, I don't know that it looks good completely without it, but I don't know that I like what I had, so we're going to re-angle that so you can see just a little bit at the bottom. like clearly tongue because of the angle and then fading away. Yeah, I think that actually looks a lot better. Just that little hint of pink inside the mouth. So it's not just a void um, and it helps ground the mouth a bit, which is what I was trying to be do to begin with. But yeah, I think that looks better. 
All right, so that's how you draw an emu. I hope that was helpful. In the floating other next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.